Good morning, everybody. It's uh, 4.29 a.m. and I can't sleep. So, I thought I'd get up and turn this uh, ham radio thing down. I'm making some colloidal silver. I got myself a 36 volt uh, power supply and some fresh silver. And make that for the, the water tank outside. I also got, now this was hard to find. It's called a PT-ADP-port. It's a, my uh, batteries died mid-sentence, if you go figure. Anyhow, this is a PT-ADP-port. And I found this on eBay. There are a few of them on eBay. This is for connecting the controllers together. This is the interface you need. Let me get it out of the box here. Okay, the first issue with this is the instructions are totally 199% in Chinese. So if you read Chinese you're in great shape. I found an app for my phone. It was a free app with lots of advertisements on uh, how to hook it up. So what you have is this little gadget. You have your input. You have your two slaves over here. And what you do here is you press this to get your right communication baud rate. And uh, it'll turn green and do all kinds of neat stuff. This has a voltage sensor right here. Now that's the temperature sensor. This is the voltage sensor. I might have to read the Chinese again. Yeah, this is the voltage sensor. And you hook this directly up to your batteries and you plug one temperature sensor in right here and that's all you need then it comes with one cable it comes with a temperature sensor but I've been using the cables temperature sensors connected directly to the batteries there's my dead batteries I need to throw away but anyhow it's not hard and then you have to go into your uh, setup with your laptop, Windows 7 laptop, into your uh, controllers and set it up. And this tells you in Chinese what you need to set up within the, con within the programming. It's not that hard, but without all of the data that you need, with it being in Chinese, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult. And it's really getting hot in here. See what I done did. I bumped that up so I could take a quick shower. Bumped it up too much. But I got that colloidal silver cooking over here. This will give me some finer particles. It's going to take longer than what I've been doing. And uh, the finer particles get into you a little bit better. With that coronavirus going around, this might just work. But anyhow, the dogs are being tired. Baby's not wanting to do anything. He did a lot of running yesterday and he's tired. He probably got a little bit of hip problems. He's fat. You know how it is. I feed him too much. Sheldon is just in here doing what he does best. Eating my wall. Stop eating the wall. Sheldon, no. Ah, oh, kids. Uh, anyhow, it's 4.36. I'm going to, uh, I might just get the laptop out and go back there and program those and see where I go from there. I'll be back. Yeah, I'm cooking here in the microwave. It is 4.45. I don't know what the battery voltage back there is, but it's working just fine not having any issues. My butter is melting. Um, 
have an oatmeal. Gonna eat some oatmeal, then go back there and play with this thing. So, I'll be back. If I can figure out how to turn this thing off. I worked on this thing until, well, until just before the sun came up, just to see how it would work. You can hear that fan running. I'm thinking I may have to take that apart and uh, put in a better fan. But anyhow, I got the wire here going to the batteries. Not seeing any problem problems really. Okay, here's the issues that I'm seeing. I am not sure if I'm supposed to do a factory reset on the slave unit. This is the slave unit. This is the main unit. Like I say, the instructions are in Chinese. It says sell only to stupid Americans because they will buy anything. That's all I know it says. But, um, I do need to go back into this one here and reset the voltage. But this one, I'm not supposed to have to do anything to it. The way the translation comes out on the instructions is this one should not be set up. This one is set up by this one. But I'm not sure of that. Now, the instructions also say that if this is flashing like this, then it's con communicating with this one. If it's solid and not doing anything, then it's working properly. But this one here will stop flashing after a short time and be solid. So I think, yeah, see there it goes, it's solid now. I'm not real sure if it's even working right yet. The voltage up there is 52. It's cloudy outside. It's not too great. But I'm going to have to put my uh, jacket on to go out there because it's really windy and it's cold out there. So anyhow, that's where I'm at. I'm going to go into the, into the master and reset the voltage because the voltage isn't where it's supposed to be. The voltage should be a little bit higher. I, I set the voltage down with the Bluetooth device and I want to set it back up to where it was. So, and I also want to make sure that the baud rate on both of them is the same. I have a choice on the baud rate of 98 or 9600 or 11K. So, anyhow, back to work. Okay, according to the understandable part of the instructions, when the green light is solid, it's working. So what I had to do to make it work was disconnect this uh, monitor. Now, the thing I don't understand yet, if I press that twice, now that should be 3600 or 1100 and whatever baud. So is it working at both? Is it working at neither? I don't know. But it's now flashing. So if I press this and hold it for one, it will go to solid and stay there eventually. Like that. So now, uh, I'm assuming that that's right, but that should be 96, and I have this thing set up for uh, 111 or 11, whatever, really fast. Um, so I did send EP ever a uh, 
request that they send me a copy of English instructions. So right now, according to the, like I say, according to the understandable part of the instructions, which I cannot find now, uh, it's right. It's working the way it's supposed to. This is the software. Uh, you probably can't see it. But you have to go to the EP Effort website to download it. You just download the one for the controller. There's, there's software for their um, inverters. There's software for everything. But just make sure you download the one for the inverter. There's also software for LiPos. Software for just about any kind of uh, inverter. But you want the one for the LiPos. Now it's flashing again. Now when it's flashing like that, it's supposed to be communicating with the uh, master. But I know I set these up for 1100, so I'm going to set that for 1100 and leave it there and see what it does. I'm just going to leave it there now. And we'll see what that does. That's really, really, really confusing and uh, not too easy to use. But I did do a factory reset on that on the slave, so if it's working, it should be receiving data from that one and telling it what to do. With any luck, they'll probably burn the house down now. We're charging at uh, 37 amps. I am going to end up replacing those fans, I just know it. The things I wanted to do today that I don't know if I'm going to get, get done or not. What did I do with those instructions? I need to find the instructions that I misplaced. And there's my silver. I'm going to dump that into the um, into the rainwater tank. Oh, there's the instructions. Okay. So I'm going to hang on to those and uh, see if I can do a better job of translating them. But, you know, everything's broken. It's just really broken English really badly. But all in all, I'm kind of proud of this. Everything works really, really well. Another thing that I noticed, and it just did it again, is that these monitors will show an error every once in a while with that in line. I might try logging into it again to see um, if my baud rate and everything is working the way it's supposed to. I can disconnect this one here and connect up there and I should still be able to log in no problem. It was just strange to me that you can only find these on eBay and the instructions were in Chinese. Like maybe they're not supposed to be sold here or something. So this one's disconnected now. If I have to leave it disconnected, then what I'll do is I'll just take this one out and uh, change the numbers to three and four and reroute whichever one of these to that one. Probably three. That'll get rid of one controller, one more thing off the board. Let's see how that works. I'm going to let it run. And uh, we'll play with it some more later. What I might have should have done and I might do it anyhow, is do a factory reset on that one up there. 
on the master and just re rebuild it completely and see if that helps anything. What I wanted to do is get the voltage up one about a half a volt, maybe a little bit more. Now it's flashing repeatedly. And we have that error there. Tempted not to use it. But anyhow, I'm going to get back to work here. I'll be back. Hey, here's what I've noticed. The last 20 minutes roughly, that light has been staying on flash, uh, constantly. It flashes every once in a while. That's what the instruction said it's supposed to do if it's working properly. The other thing I've noticed is these two lights up here, the two green lights, I don't know if you can see them or not in the video, have been flashing in unison for a really long time. There, that's flashing now. And it goes back to a solid, mostly solid. So when that's flashing, it's supposed to be communicating with the uh, main unit. And when it's solid, it's just supposed to be working properly. So with any luck, it's right. But those have been flashing in unison for quite a while. And that thing's loud. I don't even know why it's running. It's There's nothing hot in here. It's really cool, cold. So we're charging at 56 volts and 43.66 amps. And that's not bad, not at all. Not boiling the batteries. I will have to check the bat. Uh, matter of fact, I'm glad I reminded myself there. I need to get some water. And uh, we'll fill up the batteries in the next day or two. Check them and make sure they're full. But everything seems to be working the way it's supposed to. The uh, freezer's running. Back, walk back over there. And we're using 9 amps, 10 amps. So that's with the freezer. And the other, both, both freezers are running right now. And that's just 10 amps between the two. Plus all the other gadgets that we've got running in here. I turned on both ceiling fans. The ham radio is on, TV's on, internet's on. So everything's pretty much on. And that's 10 amps. That's very good. I'm happy with that. That will help. <coughs> so, I've got to go and try and figure out where the state engineer's office is. I get the well on the new property that we just bought. We bought another 30 acres. And uh, that gives us um, 130 acres that's, that's connected and 20 acres that we're selling. So these, these three lots now are connected together and one of them has a well on it. It has two wells on it that I found. I need to get a trash pump and hook it up to the wells, dump it down in there and the one is a cow well for a windmill or something like that, but I want to hook up a trash pump to that and see if the water will pull out of it and figure out what we might want to do with it. I'm going to get to work. But that one just turned off, and we're down to 8 amps. And that one in there is still on. You can see the green lights. I don't know if you can see them or not, but it's on. So, I'm going to see if I can't find the state engineer's office. I'll be back.
Okay, I got pain in the butt dogs here. Um, the I I sent a message to the the uh, there it is the seller on this uh, unit, and he sent me a copy of instructions in English. Oh my gosh, I have English instructions. I don't know how to act, but. Uh, I'm going to play with it and see if I can uh, get it running. But first I have to go to town. And as you can see, it's really cloudy out. First I have to go to town. Sheldon's eating the door. Move, Sheldon. And get a part. So, with clouds, we're charging at 20 amps. And it's only 950 something, I think. And those lights flashing don't mean a thing. They're not in sync, like I thought they might be. It was a, a delusion. So that means nothing. It doesn't say in the instructions that I can't run these together, but it doesn't, uh, if I plug this one in right now, I will get cool errors if I can get it in there. I know it fits up in there. I've had it in there before a million times. There it goes. Oops. It's not in there yet. It's almost in there, but it's not. There it goes. Now it'll it'll fire up, start working, and pretty soon we'll start getting errors. Critical over temp, right there. And then this one over here, after a few seconds, will do the same thing. Might let it run there for a little bit and see if it does it. That light's flashing now. It's I don't know what it's doing yet. Yeah, now they're both flashing. So that's not proper. Then it disconnect this. My phone's dinging away. Sue's texting me. Let's see if it stops. There it goes. Well, something I wanted to try is plugging it in here and see if this will work if it's plugged in there. See what it does. Now there's another port here which the instructions don't really talk a lot about but apparently you go into another interface like this and you can sample the panel voltages on this. So it's sampling the voltage here off the batteries and you can do the same thing apparently right up here with your um, uh, panels. But you need another little strip that this all goes into and I think this is probably it but I have no idea what pins what on this. It doesn't tell you. But I'm not extremely happy with this because there's too many variables. I don't know if it's working for sure. Um, I need this to be plugged into here so I can see what the what they're doing. I'm supposed to be more efficient with that in there, but right at the moment I'm not quite seeing it. So, anyhow, when I get back, I'm going to uh, play with the settings on these. Have to go to town for a part. I messed up and didn't buy it when I went to town yesterday. Just a little $5 part and $20 gas. Anyhow, back to work. I get past Sheldon. <coughs> I dropped my... Uh, 
cover for this one and I lost the two little screws over here somewhere. Have to do some digging and find them. Go figure. Uh, okay, I got this thing pretty well figured out. I don't really think there's any advantage of this, but I'm going to leave it in there. It is working. When the light is solid, it's working properly. It's communicating. If I disconnect this one, it's going to start to flash, which means there's no communication. There's really looks like there's no advantage to it because I can check the check these and they're still both charging at different rates and all that cool stuff. I was wrong about a couple of things. You don't have to go in here and do a factory reset. You go ahead and set this one up like normal. Set it for flooded batteries or whatever kind of batteries you have. <clears throat> and this one too. This is number one and this is number two. And I used this little doodad. This is the Ebox BLE-01. And what you do, <clears throat> I'm going to leave this cable hooked up. You plug that in there, and it'll turn on. <clears throat> you have to have the EP Ever app, which is impossible to find. Good luck with that. You go to your EP Ever app, select BLE, and for some reason I see two of them. I don't know why. Connected. So both lights are on now. And go back out of there, select controller, read the data. Always read the data first. And you can go into your device settings and whatever else. This will tell you everything about it. And for some reason I'm on device number 252. So that has changed. Real-time monitoring. The app will probably crash here. Yeah, so it is communicating. I need to put that one on that side. The, the biggest drawback that I'm finding, I'm going to get back into that app. BLE, eBox. controller. I'm going to go to battery settings just for the heck of it. I'm going to read that. Okay, it's flooded, 48 volt. You click on your advanced here and it gives you all the data that you can change. This is all your settings that you can change with this. Boost duration. Yeah, it's, it's changed since I uh, got into it the last time. So it is talking, definitely talking. And I think that having all this hooked up messes stuff up. Okay, but anyhow, the biggest drawback here, and I'm going to have to disconnect all this and do the re rebuild this one, and then I'll hook it back up and nothing will change. But the biggest drawback that I'm finding is not being able to use this MT50 because I like real-time detailed data and it's not there. So that's the drawback. And to tell you the truth, before I leave this week, if I leave, um, I may just take that out of line and put it back together the way it was. But you can see here I'm getting the error and I really should not be getting an error. So, anyhow, I'll play with it some more here and we'll go from there. It's a little irritating to tell you the truth. Disconnect that. It's not flashing. Well, <laughs> this thing's goofy. Anyhow, I'm going to play with it some more. I'll check the, check the settings on this one, see if they changed. And I may just take that out of line if it's going to be that irritating. But I'm going to go ahead and I'll check this one first. And then I will see it. it's still getting an error here. Disconnect that. Okay. 
It's still getting an error, so something's not right. Back to work. Bummer! And a half. Okay. Uh, the house is a mess. Dogs have tracked in all kinds of dirt, mud, everything else. It was raining up until a few minutes ago, and then it just cleared up. I have a friend that was wanting to come over and look at some property today, and uh, I told him to wait. Maybe I'll let him know that it's not so bad. I haven't heard back anyhow. Um, dog's eating the wall, as you can see, all that work, he's eating it. So I'm going to put metal from the floor to here. This is where it gets up. It's all dirty and tore up. This crack in the window, I think that was factory. But... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, went out here. Haven't been working on this doodad. Tripping over stuff. For a week. This thing. And I can come come to the conclusion that it ain't worth it. So what I did was I took it out of line. I could plug it back in right now. Everything is set up to where I could. But I really like having this functional. These two, both of them. And that way I can walk in here and at a glance see exactly what they're doing. This shuts this one off and it makes this this one questionable so this is gone I'm not going to use it it's a good idea and all that cool stuff but the uh, advantages of having it in line are not good enough I have also noticed that my charge voltage has come way up everything's working better without this I think it's working better it may not be but I think it is but it is cloudy out there. See how much that dropped just a few seconds ago? I'm not getting the sun that I should. <coughs> so, 4.6 amps and 4.7 amps. So they're equal. They're very, very equal. <coughs> and 8 amps. A few seconds ago it was up to 40 something amps. I have water. I need to fill. I got, need to get the blower in here and clean off the top of the batteries and fill the batteries up today. I bought a uh, tool at Harbor Freight that I'm going to try for filling the batteries. I'm going to try this pump in the water jugs. It might keep me from. Might help keep me from spilling water on top of the batteries. Now this. The uh, BLE01 for Bluetooth, I am going to set it up here, up there like that, and keep it very handy. And these wires, I'm just going to curl up up here, both of them, and that way I can go in and check these at any time. Now these two, I would have to just disconnect this and plug in another wire if I wanted to change any of that. And that's just for the 12 volt system, anyhow. We're at four, yeah, look at that. We're up to 55 amps. I was not getting that earlier. I was not getting that much current with, with this. So, that's the plan for today. I'm going to fill up the battery. I'm going to try out that there tool and uh, play around a little bit. I'm not doing anything else because my knees and stuff hurt. Plug in a, there. 14.1, There's the camera for monitoring that. Everything's kosher. One thing I probably should do that I haven't done, I have to figure out exactly how I want to do it, is I need to, for the 12 volt, set up another one of these for the charge voltage. And of course the wind is doing nothing. Wind, wind, it's just not worth it. Okay, what I, what, what, 
I take that back. Something that I do need to do here is disassemble these. These are the fuses for the wind and check the voltage on each one. Because right now it's at braking voltage. The, the wind turbine out there is not turning. So what I need to do is just check these, see if I have voltage on all of that, and uh, make sure that the wind thing is even working. But the, you can usually hear the click, click, click from that thing turning up there, and it's not. I have no click, click, click. If it is, it's turning really slow. So it's, this is at braking voltage right now. All right. Shut, baby. What are you doing down there? The freezer's on. 54 amps. And using 7. That is really good. I'm happy we changed to 48. I probably need to buy a spare 48 and 48 volt inverter because like I've always said these are your weak point. This is what will go before anything else. Alright, back to work.